Welcome to the Cal Corporation's series of videos about software engineering. The topic of this video is static data members. Before proceeding, make sure that you have already watched these other videos first. Recall that when we instantiate a CR type object, we are reserving some space from the computer's memory, enough space to store one instance of each of CR types data members. If we instantiate another CR type object, separate storage space is reserved for that other object. The static keyword has different meanings depending on where the programmer uses it. When it's used before a data members type, static means an object's memory storage will not contain space for that data member. Instead, some computer memory has already been reserved for one single m underscore gi var integer. That integer storage is separate from the storage of all the objects. Think of it as that one int is being globally shared by all CR type objects. Traditionally, a static data member must be initialized outside of the class definition. Usually, we type a class definition within a header file, and our CPP source file will use a preprocessor directive to include that header file. A static data member's initialization occurs at the top level of the CPP source file. When one of our previous videos had defined a variable outside of all functions, we had shown how that variable could be accessed by various functions, such as this do and main. These same functions can also access our static data member using fully qualified syntax. When you're inside any of the class's own member functions, the full qualification can be skipped. Although we still like to use fully qualified syntax because the full qualification makes it clearer that you're dealing with a static data member. Restricting the accessibility of members would affect where they can be used, such as denying access from main while still allowing access from the class's own do member function. For the most part, these accessibility rules apply to static data members too. But notice that the static data member's initialization can ignore any need for accessibility. Consider this array data member. We'd like its size to also be encapsulated within our class, but to do so requires initializing a static data member inside the class definition, breaking the C++ language's traditional rule about where to initialize static data members. Traditionally, you could break the rule, but only in this special situation. The static data member must have been a constant, its type must be an integer primitive, the initialization value must be a compile time constant. If you are breaking the rule to initialize inside a class definition, then you cannot also initialize it the normal way. When we use m underscore gu data size for defining the array, that size definition must occur before that array definition. Before programmers were allowed to break the rule in this way, those programmers used to accomplish their goal using this popular hack.
modern C++ allows programmers to break that initialization rule for any data member. Now, in modern code, any data member, a normal one or a static data member, could have an initialization value listed within the class definition. What essentially happens is that gets used as a default value for a constructor's initializer list. In this first example, the constructor's initializer list would work as normal. But the second example's constructor neglected to initialize the member. So this new rule-breaking feature provides a default value and our member still gets initialized, in this case, 299. 